Today we're gonna try our hand at making a book. So stay tuned. Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. So far on the show, I have made like leather book covers for all my D&D books. So far I've covered the Tome of the Barbarian and the Bard and the Cleric. Check out this playlist up here if you're interested. And since I'm going in alphabetical order for the classes on D&D, my next one would be the Book of the Druid. And I thought with this one, I could get a little bit more fancy and rather than just cover a D&D book, I can make my own book and cover that. It is gonna be an epic spell tome and I have so many ideas on how to cover it. I think you guys are gonna really enjoy what I come up with. That being said, because actually like binding a book from start to finish is such a large amount of little skills you have to kind of get under your belt, this is actually gonna be split into two episodes. This first one here is gonna be constructing the book itself. Basically just getting it ready to the point where I'm gonna actually wrap it in leather. And then I'm gonna do like some cool wet forming and design some stuff for it. I'm, I'm really excited to show you what I come up with. But for now, we're gonna jump into actually making the book itself. Before we start though, if you're new here, consider subscribing if you like the kind of content I'm producing. It really helps the channel grow and tells the algorithm that I'm producing some stuff that you like. All right, lots to do, little time to do it in. So without much further ado, let's level up this skill. The signatures. All right, while we go, we're gonna play a fun little game here. I'm. I'm drinking my drink, and if this takes too many takes for me to do, you're just gonna see me progressively slip into intoxication. I think I can do this fast enough that that won't be a problem. We'll see. <laughs> All right, so I'm designing this tome so I can like write in it or draw in it or make some like Voynich manuscript style crazy text that I can leave somewhere and somebody finds it and it becomes a mystery later on down the road. I've thought a lot about this. Anyways, the soul of this book is the paper. Now I chose this A3 drawing paper here just because I really like the, the toothiness of it. it. Has a nice texture, a nice weight. I think I can use it for a lot of different things. Also for constructing this, I bought this book binding kit off of Amazon. It comes with everything you need to do this thing, more so. I have a thimble now. I've never had a thimble and I'm, I'm more excited about that than I think I should be. Anyways, it's a really cheap kit. I think I spent like $19 on it. I'll put a link to it in the description below. All right, so to begin with, I need to tear out all the paper from my little book here. And I, I didn't like, I can never tear out pages from a book like that and have it come out clean. I always either rip it or I leave all these little bumpy tags on them. I, did, I didn't like that look at all. So instead, I used a ruler as a straight edge and an X-Acto knife and just cut all my pages out. And this worked really well. First of all, way faster than if I was to be ripping it out by hand. And the product was actually really clean. I was surprised at how good that came out. Cool, so from here, we're gonna need to fold those pages to start making our signatures. No rocket science here, I just folded them in half and then used the bone folder to make sure that the edge was nice and crisp. And although this took the longest to do, it was really relaxing. I mean, look at this happy bastard, just just singing and folding pages. That didn't take that long, or at least it didn't feel like it took that long. And I ended up with 55 pages for my book, roughly. Not roughly, I ended up with 55 pages. I don't know why I said roughly. <laughs> now the signatures themselves are kind of like a bundle of all those folded pages, kind of nested within each other. For my signatures, I'm nesting five pages within one another. Doing this makes 11 signatures for my 55 pages in all. Now, I did see people online like putting a stack of their five pages together and folding them all at once. I suppose you could do that. I feel like it won't come out as clean. Like I can guarantee these are gonna be nice and crisp if I fold them one at a time. Teach their own, you make your own workflow, do what you like. So at this point, now that I have all those little signatures, we're gonna need to sew them together. And this of course means we need holes to sew through. And measuring everything out, it looks like I'm gonna be able to get six holes in all. One inch from either end will mark my kind of end holes. And then I can get two inches in between each one after that. That just happened to work out evenly with my book, but there's no like really hard rule as far as I saw on how many of these you need. But now that I know where my holes are gonna go, I use a square and then transfer my lines to all the pages. Then I just carefully opened up a signature and started punching through those holes with an awl. 
And this kind of led me to my first problem because using this method, the holes didn't line up perfectly. So on the outer spine, they end up exactly where I want them to go. But inside along that seam, they were just off to one side. And I, I can't have that, that drives me nuts. But I came up with an incredible solution. The whole TP4000. This is just made from a couple of pieces of foam board that I just taped together. Using it though, I was able to just drape the signatures over it and then punch through everything. And doing this, the hole lands exactly where I want it to be. It is clean, it is perfect, and it is easy to do. I'm, I'm excited with that little, little workaround I made there. All right, but now that our holes are in place, we can move on to stitching. Now the particular kind of binding I'm using here is called cord binding. At least that's what I read it as on the internet. And it's using something like this hemp cord that I have here to add structure and hold everything together. Now, in order to do this, you usually need like a jig of some sort. Now I've seen a lot of people use the back of a chair for this, which totally works. You can use anything that just has like two horizontal posts. I already happen to have these two by threes from a salvage project just cut and ready to go. After screwing these together to make this awesome box, I added these hooks spaced two inches apart on top and on bottom. Then I tied on my jute cord. It's a jute cord, it's not a hemp cord, it's a jute. I don't know the difference. And string them up tight between the hooks. Now to make sure these are really tight, you can loosen up your hooks first and then connect your cordage and then tighten them down to, to really tighten out that the jute. Jute, we'll go with jute. Then I added some extra boards to this whole assembly just to boost my signatures up high enough. Now the thread I'm gonna be using is this wax thread that came with my little book binding kit. And the needles used are very similar to the ones used for leather working. They kind of have a blunted end. And you thread them in exactly the same way. Just sending the thread through the eye and then stab the needle through the thread, locking it in place. Notice how all of my holes in the signatures line up exactly with those jute cords. It's by design. Okay, for me, filming anything and explaining how to like sew it or thread it um, is always feels wonky. So I'm gonna do the best I can with this one and be as clear as possible. So first we're gonna start with a single signature. We begin by sending the needle through the first hole in the signatures. Pull it through just leaving a tail of about a few inches. Now push it back through the next hole and on one side of your first cord. Okay, now we're gonna go around that cord and go back through that same hole. When we pull that thread through, it tightens the signature right up against the cord there. Now we just do the rest of the cords the same way, coming out one hole, wrapping around that cord, and then going back through the hole, tightly binding the cord to the signatures. Once we make it to the end, we pull and make sure everything is nice and tight, and then add another signature to the mix. Then it's the same drill. Go into the first hole, then around all of the cords, but then at the end this time, in order to tie the signatures together, we're gonna take our working end of that thread there and tie it off to that tail that we left over. Then we just go ahead and add another signature, going back in the same way. All right, so from here on out, when you reach the end, it's gonna be the same thing all the way. So what you do is you take the needle and you pass it between the last two signatures kind of underneath that last thread you made. Then thread it through this loop that is formed to lock it into place. Now you just repeat that whole process, going along, locking in all of those cords, and then making that tie off on either end. On the outside, you should see your cords bound tightly to the signatures, and on the inside, you have this nice row of stitches. And this came together super easily. Everything looks nice and clean, all except for this tear right here. I'm I'm gonna be honest, that drove me crazy. That's what happens if you pull kind of in the wrong direction, kind of back from where you came from. It just rips straight on through the paper. But it's okay, cause we're gonna glue the hell out of it in the next step, doesn't matter. First though, we're gonna go ahead and cut it out of that jig. I just went ahead and snipped all the jute cord at the top and then took it off the hooks at the bottom. And this, this is starting to look like a friggin' book. It opens, it's made out of paper. I don't know, I, I could just draw on that. That would work, that's a, that's a little book right there. But as I said, to make sure everything kind of stays together and they don't start to come apart, we're just gonna glue the heck out of the thing. To do so, I put it in the book press that I made in this episode right here, and then busted out some of this Elmer's Glue All PVA glue, and just, just all of the glue on the back. Don't be shy with the glue. In fact, one of my Patreon members who does book binding kind of for fun, I'm Alarise the Rabbit, sub girl. Her exact instructions were, glue the hell out of it when you think you've glued enough, Glue it three more times. So that's what I did. I did this step like three times. 
Oh, while I'm doing quick little shout outs, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description to Total Pamarchy. She actually did a book press just before I did mine and I wanna let her get some of that love too. She's an up and coming YouTuber and I like her stuff. I can see her being big as time goes on. Anyways, once that glue is dry, we have a nice solid spine to start working with. From here, we can move on to adding end sheets. So, did you ever wonder like when you open a book, what those little little blank pages at the front and the back of the books are? Those are aptly named the end sheets. The more you know. To make my end sheets, I bought this fancy poster board that is silver on one side and gold on the other. In reading about end sheets, by the way, I just learned that they should be kind of like a heavier weight paper. Other than that, people were pretty loose on what you could use. So, I don't know, have some fun with it. Oh dear, there is, there is little left in here. Mm. All right, in the end, your end pages need to be the size of your signatures as if they were opened up. That being said, I cut mine a little bit larger than was needed. This is gonna give me the freedom to make sure I can make it perfect a little bit later on. Once that was cut, I folded it just like I folded the signatures using my bone folder to make sure that crease was nice and tight. Then I glued along the edge of one side about a quarter of the way in. Then I lined up the top edge and my spine and pressed it into place. Once I had done both sides, I pressed it in my book press and left it alone to dry. Now once dry, I can use my signatures as a straight edge and make sure everything comes out perfectly. Look at that, looks like it was made to fit. I mean, it was made to fit there. I'm making it, but you know what I mean. It came out perfect, it's good. Okay, we're gonna throw into this step, rounding out the spine. And it is like it sounds, we're making the spine of the book rounded out. I, you know, I should have done more research. I'm unsure why we do this step. Why do we round the spine of a book? This is what Google says about why we round the spine of a book. The rounding took the swell, oh, sounds dirty. The rounding took up the swell from the sewing thread and the backing gave a place for the wooden boards which could be laced on tightly. The combination of a tight back, rounding and backing ensured that the book would go back into its original form. I think that's all just to say that as you're working it or whatever, the signatures end up kind of being a little bit proud and by rounding the back, you get that nice kind of arc that ends up in the book. I show you, you see how it's more flat here? Because the back slightly rounded. That actually makes sense because the signatures end up kind of coming out a little bit proud, making like a little C, whereas in once you've rounded the book, it should kind of invert itself a little bit. You'll see in just a second. To do this though, is super easy. All you have to do is push in the top of that spine, kind of laying everything a little bit further than it needs to be, and then lightly beating the hell out of it with a hammer. Then turn it over and do the same, pushing that top layer over, and then lightly giving it a good tapping. Nice. Just keep doing this back and forth until you like the shape. As you can see here, it's got this nice kind of rounded shape on the back and this concave shape on the front. Ah, it is perfect. At least for what I'm looking for. Once I was happy with the shape, it was back into the book press for another coat of glue. This will just help it stay where I put it. Okay, so we have our end pages on and we have the book to shape. It's time for the end bands. All right, so next we need to add the end bands and some fabric to help reinforce the spine. Little end bands here, I'll show you here, is a little strip of something that helps kind of protect and reinforce these ends. And from what I've seen, there's kind of two ways you can go about it. One of them seems to be the more traditional way, which is actually sewing on the end band into place. That being said, I could probably make a whole episode out of just doing that. So we're going for number two, which is manufacturing the end band and then gluing that sucker on. Now I decided to make this whole thing out of leather because the whole rest of the book is gonna be made out of leather and I thought it would look cool. That being said, the leather has to be thin enough. Like often, if you're, if you're pre-manufacturing these like I am and sticking them on, um, it's done out of a fabric. So you want your leather to be kind of that thin. Luckily, I just happen to have some of this two ounce leather laying around. I'm also gonna be using this leather cord as a core. Now again, you can use fabric and as your core, you can just use some cordage, like some of that hemp rope again. Jute, jute rope. All I really had to do was cut a strip about three inches long. Then I wet it a bit to make it more pliable. Next, I folded the top half inch and made a mark so I can see where to apply my contact adhesive. I also added some contact adhesive to my cord. When tacky, I placed it along where the fold will be and wrapped the leather over it. Then I used my bone folder to really give it definition. Finally, I decided to dye this thing a nice deep ox blood. That's because I thought it would look pretty. And I think it does look pretty. That's a nice look. All right, so to get these things attached, 
I cut two pieces, one for each end, the width of the spine. Then I applied some glue to the back of the leather and more glue where it'll sit on the spine. Then I carefully position it where it will go and use some rubber bands to lock it into place. Once that was all set, I left it to dry. And once dry, these things honestly look pretty cool. Like I gotta envision it once the book is fully wrapped in leather, those things kind of sticking out. Ah, I think they're gonna look classy. I think that looks good. Cool, so to add a little bit more structure to our spine, we're gonna add in a layer of fabric. My little book binders kit just happened to supply me with some of this fabric here. To apply it, all I had to do was put some glue on my spine and then lay the fabric into place. Next, I added some glue to that fabric and then used my bone folder to really lock it down and define those little bands. I really want this to have the look of a tome where you see those bands kind of sticking through the leather and I wanna make sure that look doesn't end up muddied up. So by using the bone folder to push everything in, I make sure I maintain that detail. And once the glue has dried, this thing is solid. Those pages are not coming apart. There's like three layers of normal glue, a layer of glued fabric is locked in, we're good. In fact, we're so good, it's time to wrap this bad boy up by adding covers. Now I've seen people use a lot of materials for coverage. You can use a thin plywood or some chipboard that you bought. I don't like to waste, so I end up using the covers from the original drawing pad that we bought. I just cut this so that the overhang would be about an eighth of an inch over my signatures all the way around. Well, three quarters of the way around, the top, the side, and the bottom, not the spine. I then took these covers and put them into place. Measuring three quarters away from each one of my little pieces of cordage that I have here, I added marks where I needed to add holes. Then I used a hole punch to make said holes. And I'm sure you're all gonna give me hell about using my leather hole punch on some cardboard. It cut really easily and honestly, these things are interchangeable and I'm about to change them anyways. So don't kill me. That being said, if you decided to make these out of wood, make sure you're drilling at a bit of an angle so that the cordage will go through straight. Speaking of which, now we go ahead and send those cords through. Once those were through, to make sure everything stayed where I needed it, I used some clamps to lock them into place. Now on this top area here, I went in with an awl and started fraying up my cord. This is gonna help it spread out so that it lays down more flat. I'm doing this because when I wrap it with my leather, I don't want that to show through on the cover. By making it as flat as possible, I make sure I'm not adding any details I don't want in there. Once that's nice and flat, I soak those bad boys in some glue. Then I place a piece of wax paper over the top and use my bone folder to really lay everything down flat. And I'm using wax paper, by the way, because the glue isn't gonna stick to it once everything dries. Once I'm happy that everything's laying down nice and flat, it's back to the book press. I am getting a bunch of use out of this book press on this project. That being said, if you don't have one, you could just use like other books with weights on top of it or boards. You don't need a book press to do this. It's just helpful. And as you can see, once everything is dry, it is perfectly flat. Now I just repeat the same thing inside. Fraying the cords as much as I can, gluing them into place, flattening them underneath some wax paper, and then using the book press to make sure they dry flat. Doing so leaves you this really nice flat cordage here and it's held into place like these are solid. This, this is a book that I made. That's pretty cool. Like, look at this, look at that. I made this thing. It's ugly right now because I haven't wrapped it yet. I mean, technically from here, you can wrap it in whatever. You can wrap it in fabric, you can wrap it in leather. Um, go to town with it. But it is functionally, it is a book. This works. But I, I can't express to you how excited I am for the ideas I have for wrapping this thing. That's our next long episode. But I hope you liked this episode. And again, if you did, don't forget to give me that thumbs up love and subscribe so you don't release new content. This is really, this, this has done the trick, let me tell you what. Okay, I have some other business to attend to really quickly. My last episode was me making that knife sheath. And I said, if you shared with me your knife sheath, I would put it on this episode. So behold, the product of some of the most talented people on the internet. You guys rock. I love seeing your version of a thing that I've covered. Not even necessarily because it's a thing I covered. It's just, it's, it's neat to see how you approach the similar project. I love that, it's a cool community. And while I'm shouting out cool communities, a special thank you to all my Patreon members. Without you, I couldn't do half the cool stuff I do. So um, honestly, I really appreciate everything you do. If you like what I do here and wanna see this channel grow, consider subscribing to Patreon down in the description below. <gasps> that rhymed. That deserves another one of these.
All right, well, that's everything I've got today. If there's anything you'd like to see me cover, why don't you leave it down in the comments below and I will add it to the list. For now though, I've got to get to covering this. Again, so excited. In the meantime though, keep leveling up you. <laughs>